Here's one thing that both conservatives and progressives, both believers and secularists, can all agree on, that men and women who serve their time deserve a second chance. For the Colson Center, I'm John Stone Street. This is Breakpoint. Last year, President Trump signed a proclamation declaring April to be Second Chance Month. In the declaration, he said, We celebrate those who've exited the prison system and successfully re-entered society. And then he added, We encourage expanded opportunities for those who've worked to overcome bad decisions earlier in life and emphasize our belief in second chances for all willing to work hard and turn their lives around. Now, if you're thinking that this idea sounds, well, kind of Christian, though recognizing a second chance month is a recent phenomenon, the two ideas that it's based on come directly from the Christian vision of life in the world, redemption and restoration. Second chance month is, in the words of Prison Fellowship, a bipartisan national movement to address what it calls the second prison. Second prison refers to the hopelessness that often afflicts someone after being released from prison. For the 65 million Americans with some kind of criminal record, access to the kinds of things the rest of us take for granted can be a struggle. There are, by some estimates, more than 48,000 collateral sanctions, not counting local laws enacted by municipalities, that are applied to those who serve time. Collateral sanctions are a sort of add-on punishment that put housing, employment, education, and other things necessary for a full and productive life out of reach. This is not only unjust, after all these people have served their sentence, it's also counterproductive. As a Manhattan Institute study revealed, employment reduces the risk of recidivism among ex-prisoners. That's not only good for ex-prisoners, that's good for society. That's why Prison Fellowship helped create a bipartisan and unlikely alliance that includes such disparate parties like the ACLU and the Heritage Foundation in order to, quote, reduce barriers that keep formerly incarcerated Americans from successfully rejoining society, as well as to raise awareness of the importance of second chances. Churches can host Second Chance Sunday events, as well as coordinated petition and social media campaigns. Some groups even host a Second Chance 5K run. These efforts are a very fitting tribute to Chuck Colson. Upon his release, Chuck not only had a newfound faith, but he also had something many others don't when they leave prison, a network of support and some friends who believe that he was a new creation. Without that sort of network, it's unlikely he'd ever have founded Prison Fellowship, which has become an incredible force to mobilize churches to bring the good news to men and women inside prison and to prepare churches to welcome them once they're released. Chuck understood that if Christians don't lead the way in making restoration a reality for the formerly incarcerated, no one would. This is why we think Second Chance Month should be a big deal for followers of Christ. April's half over, but Prison Fellowship's Second Chance Month events calendar shows there are many opportunities to be involved, especially through social media. To find out how you or your church can participate in Second Chance Month, come to breakpoint.org and click on this commentary. We'll link you to all the information you need to jump in. While you're there at breakpoint.org, I'll link you to a great article by Warren Smith on Second Chance Month. It's part of his Restoring All things series, as well as a Breakpoint podcast interview that Warren did with Heather Rice Minus, Prison Fellowship's Vice President of Government Affairs. Heather's one of our commissioned Colson Fellows, and she offers an update on the recently passed First Step Act, which is a major bipartisan criminal justice reform effort. Again, all of that can be found at breakpoint.org. For Breakpoint, I'm John Stone Street.